Hello all and welcome to Well Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and today we are working on the waffle stitch. I mean look at that. It is a textured stitch so it's relatively thick. It does give you that ooh, ooh, <laughs> 3D look and yes I made something of it. I actually made a dishcloth. Okay you know me I don't like to just show you the stitch I like to make something from it. <laughs> so there you go. Now best part is guys if you wanted to you can make a little dishcloth or you can make a washcloth pop a little bar of soap in there, close it all up like so with a little safety pin or a little bow or whatever you want to do. So it would be great as a Christmas gift as well. But yours truly is using it as a dishcloth. Okay, beautiful. I love, love, love. Is it not gorgeous? I mean, look at the texture on that. And no matter which way you look at it, it just looks gorgeous, yeah? Upside down, sideways, whatever. So there you go, guys. I don't know what the right way is now. <laughs> It doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter now um, the actual size of it is actually if you look carefully that's my hand so you're looking at about an 8 inch roughly between a 7 and an 8 inch square if you wanted to make yours larger all you need to do because the pattern is actually a multiple of chain 3 um, and then you add another 4 chains at the end of that chain row all right so I went across 30 and then I added 4 chains extra okay for you know your uh, first stitch now uh, if you wanted to make a blanket you need to make obviously a lot more chains now just remember one thing because it's a textured stitch quite you know a thick stitch that will shrink a little when you when you're crocheting it so like my chains are you know roughly that big by the time I was finished with them and they shrunk a little bit because all this textured stitch really pulls in tight okay so just remember that if you want to make a blanket or something large then you need to add more stitches now I did the 30 stitches or the 30 chains I should say in the beginning on purpose to show you that if you wanted to I don't think I mentioned in the tutorial but if you wanted to you can continue going and you could make this into a thick scarf for winter and I know winter is coming up in different countries we are actually coming up to uh, summer here in Melbourne so I thought I'd make a dishcloth but if you continue this I don't know how many rows maybe 50 rows 80 rows I don't know how many because I've not made a scarf in this uh, stitch before but if you keep going and going and going you can make yourself a beautiful thick solid winter scarf Okay, so I just thought I'd mention that in um, the promo now. I didn't mention it throughout the tutorial because we were making a dishcloth, but that can be turned into a solid scarf. All right, so I'm not going to talk too much because, you know, as you know, my tutorials <laughs> go a long time. Just going to let you know that this yarn is uh, a Claquetan 8 ply. It's not necessary to use this. In fact, you're better off using a cotton. All right, but this is actually wool. So your, your, if you're going to use it as a dishcloth, you are better off using cotton. Cotton makes the best dishcloths, okay? Now, it does call for a 4 millimeter hook. Yours truly used a 4.5 for two reasons. One, I wanted you to see the stitches anyway, because that's pretty much what I usually do. The other reason is my crocheting is relatively tight. So if I used a 4 millimeter with this stitch, that piece right there would have shriveled up even more be a lot tight it was all shriveled up okay so i went up a stitch size a hook size now that doesn't work well with everything but it does work well with this particular stitch i could have even gone up to a five you just have to be careful if you go up too high you start to see gaps and this stitch is not made for gaps it's made for texture to be nice and thick and solid so Grab yourself a hook size to suit your thread, cotton if you're making a dishcloth. Grab your scissors, you will need those. Grab two stitch markers if you are a beginner at crochet and relatively new at least, um, you'll need two stitch markers. You will need that sewing needle because you will be weaving in one end with me and the other end I send you off on your own. So that's pretty much all I want to say. Don't forget, guys, um, we are in the middle of a giveaway right now. So I've popped a link to the giveaway in the description box down below. It's the very first link you come to. So click on that and enter our giveaway. You must be in it to win it, guys. It does close um, 10 a.m. on the 25th of October, which is this Sunday morning, 2020. And that's it, guys. So go ahead and make this gorgeous waffle stitch dishcloth. Enjoy, guys.
Alrighty guys, we are going to start off with a quick slip knot and a slip knot is just grabbing your tail end, wrapping it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it there. Okay, grabbing your back loop, passing it over halfway, hold it there, grab the other loop, passing it all the way over, pop your hook in and give it a tug. Now remember guys, the best thread to use for this particular um, project, like a washcloth, would be a cotton. So we're going to start off with chaining one. And a chain is yarn over your hook, pull the loop through like so. Okay, that's one. And another one. Two. And three. And four. And five. The actual pattern itself calls for chain three, Plus four. So what that means is you chain three all along your row until you get to the length of your chains and then when you find the length you like you just add four more chains and those four more chains are going to help us at the beginning of the row and I'll explain that to you when we get there. So what I want you to do I've chained up five. Chain up the amount of chains you would like for the size of your piece. Now I'm going to be chaining up 30 altogether and then we'll add our four. Okay so there's five, six, seven, Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. All right. So there's our thirty chains. What we want to do is add another four. One, two, three, and four. All right. Now what we're going to do? We're going to put our yarn over our hook. We're going to put a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So it's actually one, two, three, and four. And normally we would pop our hook in that stitch right there. Yours truly would like to turn it and see these bumps you see right here. I would like for you to pop your hook in that bump. So count your chains again, yarn over your hook first. Don't leave that loop there too loose. So you go one, two, three, and four. Turning it a little bit and there's your little back bump right there. All right, so yarn over. Pull up a loop and you should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, pull through your last two loops. Now that's a double crochet. You're going to pop another double crochet in your next stitch. Now you'll find because you've already popped one in that back loop or back bump, your work has already turned. So it's showing you the back bump in your next stitch. It's right there. So you're just doing your normal double crochet, which is yarn over your hook, popping it in that back bump. If you are struggling with that, then you can just pop it in the normal front chain there. Those little stitches there, that's fine. But trust me, your work will look so much better. By the way, we're doing these double crochets all the way across the row. Your work will look so much better if you pop them in the back bump for this particular project and not all projects. So what I would like for you to do is to go ahead and pop your double crochet in the back bump of every stitch. All right, how did you go guys? We're almost there. <laughs> and a few stitches left. We get a nice close up of these stitches here now so you can see um, where we are putting our hook. There's one more back bump right there. Whoops, the yarn is splitting. There we go. And then right here you have one stitch left. Turning it a little bit. Okay, there we go. We're good. All right, so you should have 32 stitches across. Now, because we have 
our work this way it's easier to count oh that didn't work let's try that that's better it's easier to count our stitches just by counting the posts and these are the posts of your stitches but if you wanted to count them properly what you really are looking at when we are counting stitches are these little v's that you see up the top but i'm just going to count the posts for now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, whoops, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and your chains here will act as 32. Turn your work, nice close, chain up one and two. Now before you go, if you are new to crochet, I would suggest grabbing a stitch marker of some sort, a paper clip, a piece of thread, whatever, popping it through that very first loop you see there and the, the loop at the back. So you're popping it through two loops and you have one loop on the, on the bottom of it and two loops on top. And that is where you will slip stitch to at the end of the round. I'm sorry. That is your last double crochet that you'll be doing at the end of each round. I'm not slip stitching. All right, now not in that first stitch that you see, that first little space there, but that little tiny space right there, right next to it, we're gonna do a double crochet in there. That's your normal double crochet. Yarn over your hook, pop it through the loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, yeah? Then you put your yarn over your hook, we're going to do what we call a front post. Now, these are your posts, like I said before. Those were your stitches, these are your posts. So you've popped your double crochet in that stitch, your next double crochet has to go around your front post. So yarn over your hook, pop your hook through that space and around that post. Okay, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should still have your three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. All right, now we're just going to do two double crochets, two normal double crochets in the stitches. So yarn over, pop your hook in the stitch, and do your one double crochet, pop one in the next stitch and do your second double crochet. And now we're going to do a front post again. So yarn over your hook, there's your next stitch because you're in this stitch here. So that's your next stitch there. You're popping your hook through to the back, yes? And around that whole post, yarn over and pull through. Now you've got your normal three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And now we're going to do our double crochet two in a row now. Now remembering where you are putting your hook, don't pop it back into that stitch that you already went around. You just want it in that very next stitch. So all you need to do is look at your work and assume that that is your next stitch, which it is, okay? So yarn over your hook, normal double crochet in that stitch, one, and normal in your next one, two. And here we go with that front post again. That's the next stitch, so you're going around that post that way and then through to the front, pulling up your loop and doing your normal stitch. Then, making sure you're going through the right stitch again, you're going in the next one with a double crochet and your next double crochet. All right, now it's time to pick up speed a little bit, popping it around your post like so. Truly. Wonderful. And then one in your next double crochet. And then one in your next double crochet. And then you've got your front post again. That noise, sorry guys, is just a stitch marker. Double crochet in your next double crochet. Double in your next. And then your front post double crochet. One in your next double crochet and one in your next front post double crochet double crochet front post all right and double crochet in your next one in your next front post one in the next 
one in your next and front post now we're closing towards the end all right so what you've got here at the end remember how we started off at the beginning where we had our chain two and then we put that double crochet there so the chain two will classify as a double crochet in this round so you've got one and two at the beginning you need to end up with one and two at the end so you're going to pop a double crochet in your next stitch like so and your next one is a tad tricky let's get a little bit more close for you and there's your chain right there see that right there a little bit tight if you crochet tight as tight as me and you're going through the two loops on top and one loop on the bottom pull that loop through like so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two all right now it was a little bit tricky because that was the very first chains that we started with this row won't be because when you get to the end of this row you will have your stitch marker in there it'll be easy to jump in and from now on after every row you're going to pop your stitch marker so I've got a second stitch marker right here so what you need to do now or we'll move it out the way for now there's your work turn your work however way you want to turn it just remain consistent yeah and that close up for you and chaining two chain is your one and then your two you're grabbing your new stitch marker and popping it in that stitch between the two loops and the one all right then now this part here all you have to remember is that first row that we did there not the double crochets we did that first row we did of pattern that is the first row of your pattern okay now we're going to do the second row of the pattern and that's going to change a little bit see how these stitches here are sticking out at you and that one there is right at the back so what you're going to do in this round is you're going to do a front post in every stitch that sticks out at us so these ones here are sticking at us and that one's right at the back these two are sticking one at the back and that's the pattern you're looking at for this round so popping for everyone that's sticking out towards you that is where you're doing your front post okay so you've done your chains and the first stitch you do will be a front post in the second round okay in this round or in this row so to speak all right now that stitch see how far back it is in that one we are putting a normal double crochet okay and now these two here are sticking out at us so we are going to put front posts in each one of those so yarn over front post two and two okay there's another one sticking out at us so we're doing a front post so you're doing the opposite of the round we just did okay of the row we just did on the other side now that's going back double crochet so this row is actually two front posts and one double crochet the other row was one front post and two double crochets so now you're doing your two front posts and that's at the back so you're doing your one double crochet and the next front post and your next front post one double crochet front post front post double crochet front post front post double crochet front post front post double crochet and so on double crochet front post and front post double crochet front front double crochet and now that we're at the end of the row you will have 
your next stitch is sticking out at us so we do need to put one front post there okay now before you continue I'll show you what you've done here so you get it when you started the row you did a double crochet well you actually did chains okay which is classified as a double crochet then you did one front post and then you did your normal stitches and then you did two front posts and so on all the way through so really you have to end off your row the same way you started with a front post and then your double crochets chains in that side but your double crochets on this side okay so there's your stitch marker remember we replaced we replaced it before yarn over pop your hook in your stitch marker oh, I didn't even go through the stitch marker Jeez, I'm doing well already I don't know <laughs> pop your hook through the stitch of your stitch marker and if it helps you you can actually take your stitch marker out for now because you've got your hook in there anyway but it's just awkward to finish off your stitch just do your normal double crochet in that stitch there all right and what you should have is that that is actually the wrong side of your work turn your work over and have a quick look that's your right side you won't be able to work the pattern out until we do our very next round and then the pattern will start to look normal okay so what we're going to do is start the next round I'm going to show you the first part of the round and then you're going to continue that row and meet me back all right so what we're going to do remember what we did before we turned our work that way or whichever way you turned it and then you chained two one and two you grabbed your stitch marker like so I think I've just split the yarn I have a feeling it's yarn yeah, we'll split it doesn't matter so we'll just keep going now in this round it's going to be different again you're going to put a double crochet you're doing exactly what you did in that first row you put your double crochet in your first stitch and then you put a front post it's sticking out at us so we're putting a front post in that stitch there it's a lot easier to see this row now you've got two double crochets remember one front post and two double crochets yes and then your front post any front post sticking out at you needs a front post and any stitches sitting at the back needs double crochets pretty much similar to our previous round but that was one this is two so what I want you to do yes you're going to do this on your own just this row front post in the first two double crochets in your next yes and then front post in your next all right so what I want you to do is continue in that manner get to your very next stitch marker here actually get to that very last front post and I shall meet you up all righty guys here we are at the end of the row I'm just about to do my last front post which is right there okay now you have one double crochet and then your last stitch right there so you're going to pop your last double crochet in that double crochet first then you're going to pop a double crochet in your um, stitch marker stitch I have a feeling I've split that so I'm going to take that undone hopefully you haven't split yours I just crochet very tightly guys and if you're new to the channel my regulars would already know that <laughs> pop your hook in and do your double crochet all right now what I want you to do is remember the row that we've just done here now that would be classified as row number one okay turn your work and now we're going to be doing row number two even though we're all the way up to the fourth row when I mean row one and row two that's row one and two of your pattern so this this is the repeat pattern okay so you've got the first one that you're going to repeat and now we're going to do the second row so chaining one and two and once again grabbing your stitch marker of course if you are an intermediate crocheter you don't really need to use stitch markers if you don't want to okay now you are just popping remember this second row has that stitch that's sticking out to us it's forward right so you are going to put a front post in that forward stitch all right then you've got your back stitch right there you're going to pop your double crochet in that back stitch okay and now you've got these two front posts sticking towards us you're going to put front posts in this one these two okay one and two 
and your next stitch is sitting right back you're going to pop your double crochet in the back of that stitch then you have your front post right there and your front post in your next so this row is two front posts one double crochet two front posts one double crochet and so on and so on and so on and so on get to your last i don't know front post which will be a very second last stitch and i shall meet you up Alrighty, guys here we are at the end of the row now i didn't i did my last two front posts i didn't do the rest because i wanted to show you here it can look a little tricky because ordinarily you would put a double crochet there and then two front posts well that doesn't work towards the end of the row you put your double crochet there like normal okay so you've done your two front posts and then your double crochet you still need to do one more front post right there and then you have that very last stitch right there you're going to put a double crochet just one in that very last stitch oh can you believe it i've split the yarn again i tell you <laughs> it happens in every tutorial you know that don't you <laughs> all right so popping your hook directly into your stitch with your double crochet all right now when you look at this side this just looks plain basic you can use this side which is great but this is your original side so you're starting to see a pattern form yes when you do your first round now your next round that we're going to do it's going to have that look that look and it's going to keep looking like that all the way up so you're going to get that little cube kind of look all the way up in you know each row okay so what i need for you to do get excited <laughs> you're thinking what she's going to send us off on her own what <laughs> yes i am you're going to head off on your own and you're going to repeat rows one and two so you do row one and then two that's two rows row one two that's four rows so in other words do 14 more rows Meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys. Oh, look how gorgeous it comes out. I mean, truly gorgeous. <laughs> now, I'm at the end of my 14th row and it kind of looks unfinished, doesn't it? Because I did the other row with the two double, um, with the two front posts and one double crochet. That's the row I just finished. If you finished on a row that ended up like that, then you're done if not with us continue along now actually before we start the question you need to ask yourself is this dishcloth big enough for me well i pop my hand on there and i'm just pretending i'm washing or cleaning or whatever you want to call it and to me that's perfect for my hand i think any bigger and would look it would kind of be too big any smaller and it wouldn't be big enough for me all right now you need to decide yourself is that the size you want all right i like this size and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to end off with the row that makes the square look square okay i hope that helps which i'm going to end off with that very first row we did so the row one it's actually classified as row two because that was our row one and this is row two and row three so really you were repeating rows two and three you weren't really repeating row one however i just called it row one because it was the first row that we did so chain one and two grabbing your stitch mark oh actually you don't need your stitch marker anymore because this is your last row you still need it on that end if you've got it there so you're just popping your normal double crochet in your next stitch and you are popping your front post and then two double crochets remember this is the very first row we did after we did our double crochet row in the beginning Alrighty, how did you go guys? Pretty cool, yo, huh? 
cannot wait for the, our little dishcloth to be finished by the way guys don't forget to um enter our current giveaway that we are having that's here at wow crochet i will pop the link in the description box down below the very top link you see will be the giveaway link you've got to be in in it to win it guys you really do it's a big giveaway all right now we've got to the end of the row i've done my last front post we're going to do a double crochet in your second last stitch a double crochet in that Ooh, if i can get it in there nice tight stitch fine i'll take the stitch marker out <laughs> hopefully yours isn't as tight as mine i say this in almost every tutorial because i crochet extremely tightly <laughs> so there you go okay and there you go now that pretty much is it this is where we are going to finish off our um, dishcloth, yes? Just giving everything a really good tug, nice good tug. Plus once it's all washed, it kind of all sits into place anyway. What we're going to do to finish this off, we'll bring that up. We're just gonna pull a loop through like so. And grab your scissors. Oh, needle went flying there too. <laughs> grab your, your darning needle and thread it and there you go all right so let's weave this in all right so this is the front i'm sorry this is the front of your dishcloth and that's the back okay a lot of people even use the back i personally like to use the front like that it doesn't matter either way okay what does matter is you want to literally hide this tail don't you all right so anywhere you want you can pop your thread through I'm going through the back way so what I'm going to do is find a stitch let me get nice and close see how close I can get without it blurring on me <laughs> so any stitch there you are popping your needle through like so pulling that thread down okay so your thread is down now you turn it keep turning and you are weaving your thread in anywhere you like I'm going to go down as far as I can like that making sure you can't see the needle in front and you can't so I'm going down like that so far yes then I am going into this area right here all that thickness that we've been working into when we did our um, front post and back post just check the front that this is actually where I'm putting the needle through right at the back of that all right so you can't see it at all you're going one way then you're going to go back the other way there right there it doesn't look like it'll come undone this is the only way that it won't come undone you're going to turn around and one more time go back a third time when you weave in three times different sections of course I know it's the same section but it's different stitches when you weave in that third time sorry I should have asked you to check the front when you're weaving that third time, there, there's no way that thread is coming undone. All right. And yours truly, I didn't just weave it in through there. I literally, let me get a nice close up for you. I literally split some of the stitches on the inside. So that is not coming undone. Okay. Turn your little piece around. That's your first end all weaved in. You can't even tell there was an end there. Now your job is to weave in that one. I'm not going to do that with you. You can do that off air. So the only problem I have with the waffle stitch is that it's a yarn eater. <laughs> it has absorbed a lot of yarn. Here is 36 grams of yarn. So it's not a big square and it has actually absorbed up 36 grams of yarn. I did, however, use the larger size hook because it does call for a four millimeter. I used a 4.5. So that may have contributed to it. Um, but still, I mean, look how gorgeous it is. Oh. And also the actual um, thickness of it is relatively thick. So if you want to make something that's lightweight, this kind of is not a pattern for you. However, you can use a lightweight yarn, a very lightweight yarn. Um, in fact, you can make baby blankets with a four ply yarn or a number two if you are overseas in this particular pattern, you can. But remember, if you're going to, you need a lot more yarn because it is actually a yarn, a yarn eater. It will take up as much yarn as it can. 
<laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you do for me. Remember to enter the giveaway. The link to the giveaway is in the description box down below. It does close at 10 a.m. 25th of October, which is this Sunday. Um, and the draw will be around 4 p.m. on the same day. So thank you so much for watching. I love the waffle stitch. I hope you loved it too. And all I want to say right now is ciao for now.